So one of the first complex fractions that you probably might encounter is gonna look something like this, unless you've already done like some very, very basic ones. But once we start getting into simplifying complex fractions, this is a fairly basic example. So what I want you to recognize here is I have a big fraction, right? I have a numerator up here, denominator down here. And within that numerator and denominator, I have more fractions, two over x, one over y, three over x. And that hence comes the name complex fractions. We just have a lot of fractions. So to understand what we need to do or what we're looking for is we're trying to simplify this down. We only want one fraction and anything that can divide out in the numerator and denominator that can simplify this even more, the better. So that's kind of our idea. So to understand how to do that, there's a couple principles that I wanna make sure you understand. So the first one is if I had, let's say a one over a four, if I multiply this by an eight, I have just eliminated my fraction. Why? Four evenly divides into eight. How many times? Two times. So this is the same thing as a one times two, right? Four divides into eight, two times. So therefore the answer is two. Another thing, if I had one over four, if I multiply by a three times a three in the numerator and the denominator, that is gonna produce a fraction of three over 12, which is exactly equivalent to my one fourth. So as long as I did the same thing in the numerator and the denominator, I am producing equivalent fractions. Furthermore, if I had a one plus two over four, and I was gonna do that same thing, I would need to make sure though, I put parentheses around that numerator. I need to multiply the three times the top and the bottom. Now remember, one plus two is going to be three, so that's gonna be three fourths. So three times three, that's gonna equal a nine twelfths, which again, would simplify down to a three fourths. Just remember when you're multiplying something and you have your terms that are separated by addition or subtraction, you need to make sure you distribute. Okay, so that's the easy stuff, right? That's kind of like, make sure you're with me before we start getting over to this. So now I look over to here, I don't have numbers, I have variables. Everybody's favorite joke, right? Why just start bringing in letters? That's where everything makes confusing. But let's think about knowing what I said over here and how that applies over here. Because I need to be able to find what my denominators divide into. Now four, we know divides into four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, right? 28, 32, what does x divide into? Well, x divides into x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, right? And it keeps on and on and on. Same thing with y. So our idea though is try to find what is the smallest variable that x and y are both gonna divide into because I have two of them. I just don't have a number, I have two of them. Well, that is just gonna be an x and a y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply everything times an x and a y. Now you could rewrite this on the top and on the bottom to kind of show that equivalence here, but I'm just gonna rewrite it once just to save kind of time and show that I'm gonna multiply this x, y here, 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 and here. Now, since we have a little bit more time, let's actually write this out so we can see what that would look like. All right, so now what I want you to see here is since I have the x, it, since I have terms now in the numerator and the denominator, I know things are gonna divide out, right? So here, my x's will divide out. That's just gonna leave me with a two y. Here, I don't really have even a denominator here. That's just gonna leave me with a negative x, y. Over here, my y's are going to divide out. That's just gonna leave me with an x. And here, my x will divide out, will leave me with a negative three y, which now I have reduced this complex fraction from being very complex to one fraction. So now it's going to be simplified. You can always look to see if you can, what else you can factor out and see if anything else can be divided out. But in this case, this is going to be your factored form. We are all good. And hopefully now you have a better understanding of complex fractions.